What's up, guys? My name's Ed. This is Marissa, and this is Distant Critics. Oh, was I supposed to go right after? Yeah. Okay, do it. Do it one more time. Today we're going to be talking about Transformers 1. Marissa, can you go ahead and read the plot? Sure, I can. <laughs> <laughs> the untold origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron, better known as sworn enemies, but who once were friends bonded like brothers who changed the fate of Cybertron forever. Uh, so, Marissa, um, I'm just going to get straight into it. I was not looking forward to this movie when it first came out. I saw the trailer. I saw certain people like hyping it up, and I was like, nah, this looks silly. Saw the movie. Loved it. All right. Wonderful, wonderful movie. But, you know, before I get too far into it, I want to know your initial thoughts about this film. You know, you were like that because when yes. I brought up the movie for us watching this movie, you were not excited. And I was the one that was like, no, we're going to watch Transformers <laughs> 1. We're going to do it. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Good movie. You know, I was actually really shocked. I was excited going into this movie. My husband and I both were, and it did not disappoint me at all. Um, I like how they didn't try to change the original look too much. I think that it's what we grew up with, and they kind of stuck with that as an animation film. Um, I also like the building blocks that they set throughout throughout the film. It really made me have more of like an in-depth experience and relationship with Megatron and Optimus Prime or Orion Pax. You know, too, I like, even though they're sworn enemies, I do appreciate the fact that they really showed how they bonded as friends and how they bonded as family and showing that, you know, relationship and then seeing that relationship turn sour, like, quickly too like that that churn like megatron really churned sour pretty quickly when things were going down but the longer we go through the film the more we see d16 attitude change more into like a no mercy villain and we see the relationship between him and orion's window and it almost makes you feel bad for him right but then at the same time it's like you instantly hate him at the same time mm -hmm. So it's like you feel bad and you hate him. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. You start seeing those little nuggets of him starting to become Megatron and being that big bad that we all hate. But having the story, the origin story, um, it really added an extra layer to this film. Um, and I think the biggest reason why I wasn't uh, that excited for the film is because I feel like they've they've dragged this transformers storyline for so long in the movies with the live action ones my favorite transformers of all time is the first one with shia labeouf and then after that it just kind of just felt so repetitive of the stories and them protecting earth and all that stuff and to me it, it just starts to get to a point where it doesn't feel believable um because you got these big ass robots and you got little humans with guns like they're not doing anything really and you can't convince yeah. me that like we're gonna stop a transformer but i like that this film um is based in uh in an environment with just transformers so like um i think that adds an, an extra layer an extra dimension to the film where the stakes are higher like where it is believable even though it's an animated film it's believable that you have these two titans colliding with each other um rather than it taking place on earth just yet so i like the background stories um and then the animated like you said before i like the the 90s 80s style to it where like you can get a little 10 year old boy that will love this film and then their grandfather will remember some of these things that are in this film um, from when they were kids as well so um it's a generational uh it's a generational type of film where all 
different ages can enjoy this film, regardless of who you are. There's some jokes in this this movie that are for kids that will go right above kids and speak straight to the adults. It's hilarious. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, those those are really my, my overall thoughts about the film. Yeah, great input, Ed. Um, another thing too, the cat, <laughs> the cast was a solid cast. You have Scarlett Johansson, Chris Hemsworth, you know, um, who else? Who else is in it? Um, I, I always forget his name, but he's the father from uh, Spider-Verse, the Spider-Man movie. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But he was Megatron. Oh, and uh, Key, Key and Peele, I think his name is Bumblebee. Oh, yes, yes, for Bumblebee. For yes. Bumblebee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just a... a Nice, well-built, well-rounded cast that went into Transformers. And, you know, I have to talk about, like, I know you have a pet peeve when it comes to characters and <laughs> matching and not matching. And do you, f how was it for Bumblebee specifically? Or even, like, Chris yeah. Hemsworth's character? Like, how was it? No, I'm glad you brought that up because I was, that's another reason why I wasn't really um, hyped for this film because I feel like I just know Chris Hemsworth's voice. I feel like I know uh, Keen Peele's voice, like, and I don't. I didn't know if I could connect with the character because he has uh, Chris Hemsworth has this British. I don't know if he's British or Australian, one of those two. But he has an accent. Uh, but again, you don't feel that in this film. He has that transformation to his voice you see what i did there um yes. to, be, <laughs> to be optimist <laughs> uh kian you can you can hear his voice but they're doing something different with bumblebee where we usually hear him talk through a radio um but in this movie it's an origin story so he still has his voice box and he is very annoying and talking fast and they i think that that was a great casting for that a specific role so uh, again when it comes back to, to that and and those pet peeves i didn't have a problem in this film surprisingly i thought the voice acting was really really done well and i was also surprised to even hear Scar when i heard scarlett johansson's voice i was like oh that's her but it, it was cool i think she did a really good job in this this movie too uh, but yeah overall this is going to be a recommend for me um i actually had this in my top two or three films of the of the year for animated films and then i saw the wild uh, robot and it kind of knocked this film a little bit more down but overall really great action really great great stunt scenes for an animated film and the voice acting was really good storyline everything really liked it and solid um <laughs> marissa what are your thoughts about the film do you recommend it um i give this movie a recommend um i thought this movie kept me captivated it kept me interested it kept me intrigued and it was funny it made me laugh um it was a bit witty and stuff so i just think overall like i said with the cast it was a well-rounded cast it was a well-rounded movie so recommend yes love that love that but most importantly we would love to hear what you guys have to say um about this film if you liked it if you didn't whatever your thoughts are leave them in the comments down below and if you have any other suggestions on any other movies you'd like us to review please leave a comment down below so we can turn your idea into reality and thank you guys so much for joining us today on distant critics thank you peace